Hey guys, and I wanted to make a video on an induction coil that I have, which apparently, I don't know how I haven't even made a video showing this thing properly, except for one archive one, which I just used to destroy things. But yeah, here is an induction coil. Here's a warning label. This just, I think it was used in equipment. If you look at the other side, yep. So this is the spark gap, which is set to three centimeters. I measured with a digital caliper. And it can be adjusted between 1.5 millimeters and 3 centimeters, which is here. Alright, so lights off for this experiment. I'm going to use 6 volts. Look at that. It's really loud. Alright, so I got my multimeter here, and we're going to measure the resistance of the primary and secondary. Alright, so now we're going to measure the resistance of the primary coil. Alright, so the resistance is about 0 0.3 ohms. And the secondary is 6.9k. You might have noticed that there's a little gap here. Well, the reason is... Yep, you can adjust the secondary. Well, yeah, the, well, you can adjust the primary tone ratio. See? And the voltage will be a lot lower afterwards, and then you can make it higher this way. Don't ask me how it works, I'm not very sure. And also, if you look here, it appears that some iron plates that they just stuff together to make the core. And the secondary, I mean the primary, sorry, is really thick. And if you look under here, you see the secondary wires there. I don't actually know what's inside, and I'm not here to open it. All right, let's just start with the basics of how this thing works. So we'll just start with the positive side. So this is connected to here, which is connected right to this contact here. So you can see there's no gap between it yet. And basically, when I put positive here, current will flow through here, then here, then here, since it's, it's connected up. And then it will go through the coil, like here. And then this side is where it will also go through a fuse, a 5 amp fuse, 250 volts. And then to negative, or ground, as you want to say it. And while that's happening, since the coil is now energized, this, the plates here act as an electromagnet, and this material, which is magnetic, basically gets attracted, so this happens, so, you see? When this happens, it creates a small gap, which disconnects the coil momentarily, and then since there's no more power, the coil is no longer energized, so it hops back into place, and then it repeats the cycle again, basically just going like that really quickly. And this screw is for calibration. Oh yeah, as you can also see, this material is magnetic. I got a small magnet, and, see? Oh, damn it, now it's stuck. For the sake of these next tests, I'm about to perform so I can show you how things work. I decided not to sacrifice the original fuse, which looks like it hasn't been replaced for quite a few years. But instead, I utilized my own fuse, which is the exact same rating, 5 amps, 250 volts. So basically, I'm going to energize the coil. And you're going to see, I'm going to bypass this thing so it doesn't oscillate. So by touching this, this should move. See that? Ignore the oscillation going on in my power supply, that's normal. So, now this is at 1.5 millimeters. this is what happens. Okay, I decided to do this with my lights off again, but here, I adjusted it. See that? You can see how powerful this thing somewhat is. Like, you can see some corona discharge. You see that? When this thing isn't calibrated properly, you can see some corona discharge when it tries to make arcs. That's scary. But anyways, there's also an issue with this mechanical oscillator here. As you just saw, see the amount of sparks that get generated here? That's not a good thing, because it's going to eventually wear out the contacts, you see, I'll just put it a bit closer. Yeah, those contacts will wear out quite quickly. And I mentioned this induction coil also works with a 6 volt battery that I have, a lantern battery here. What? Bro, this is barely even able to deliver enough current. This is a shit. 
Well, you didn't think I was going to forget this, did you? Well, we're doing it. I'm going to measure this induction coil and it's oscillator. See those giant spikes? That's because this is an inductive load. And obviously you'd expect these giant spikes. Alright, we got a function generator out and I used a high voltage MOSFET for this but it's inductive kickback like last time. Works! Oh shit. Alright, lights are off. Let's see how this goes with the function generator. Uh... There's a tiny amount of corona discharge. Let me turn up the frequency a little bit. See that now? See that? That's the corona discharge. As I turn up the frequency to about 24 hertz. Look at that corona discharge, bro. Look at that. Woo. Sheesh, man. Uh, 68 hertz, 69 hertz, oh, nice. Oh, never mind. Never mind, 150 hertz. Yeah, I don't think it's going to work at that rate. I'll have to put it down a bit more. I had a lot of trouble making arcs. Okay, so maybe using a tiny spike was not the best idea. I mean... Using a tiny, uh... Wait, what? What am I saying? I think my brain is broken. Uh, I've noticed there's a bit of an issue here. That is not meant to happen. I'm pretty sure that's not meant to happen. I only said 6 volts, not this, and it's just making corona discharge. This is what the drain waveform looks like for my MOSFET. Oh yeah, just one more experiment. I just want to light up some CCFLs. I'll find the wire, here it is. I'm not surprised. Jesus Christ. This works as expected. Um, see a bit of a spark going on here. So yeah, this is the video of me showing an induction coil. Hope you enjoyed.